The Stark Reflections podcast was launched on January 5th, 2018. It's been 276 weeks, 1,932 days, 63 months, 5.3 years, or that's more than half of a decade of the Stark Reflections podcast. This is episode 300, and I've reflected on so many things. I've had a chance to talk to so many awesome people over the years, and I've had a chance to share some of your comments throughout the podcast, throughout the episodes. But for this special 300th episode, I'm going to hear your reflections and things that you have shared about your own writing journey or potentially from the podcast itself, as well as a few other special treats. And that's coming up in this episode, episode 300 of the Stark Reflections podcast for Friday, April 21st, 2023. Welcome to the Stark Reflections on Writing and Publishing podcast. There has never been a better time for writers. More information, options, and opportunities are available to you. But navigating these requires insight. Join Mark Leslie Lefebvre as he draws upon more than a quarter century of experience as a writer, a bookseller, and a trusted book industry consultant to explore and reflect on the writing and publishing landscape to help you make informed choices on your writer journey. Hello, Reflectives, and welcome to episode 300 of the Stark Reflections podcast. Fanfare, please. This is your host, Mark Leslie Lefebvre, and I'm so honored to have been with you here for 300 episodes, whether you've been listening from the beginning or whether you joined up along the way. This is a pretty big deal for me. It's a pretty big landmark. It's more than five years of weekly podcasts, releasing a new, at least one, and and, and if you do the math and, and, and check it out, it's only been... Well, I, I I did the math already. Two hundred and seventy six weeks. <laughs> There's three hundred episodes because I, I snuck in a few extra episodes along the way. Sorry, couldn't help it. That doesn't even count the content that I am providing for my patrons. The additional audio feeds that are going to the patrons and and a huge shout out and thank you to all my patrons who support this podcast over at patreoncom reflection because this episode is is sponsored by the awesome patrons of the podcast. I'm going to be reading your names later on in the episode because, hey, it's it's all about you. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm not doing this with a corporate sponsor, just being supported and sponsored by the peeps who are listening to the podcast. And a special, of course, thank you to all of my listeners who are with me today and who have been with me however long you've been around. So first things first, I'm going to share a clip from episode one. Yeah, just, just the opening clip from episode one, because I, I listened back to it this morning just to sort of get myself in the mood for, wow, it's 300 episodes, et cetera, et cetera. And I thought, well, how much has changed uh, since the beginning? Well, um, a couple things is the, the opening audio hasn't changed with one exception. The opening audio was the opening audio, but then I did a little bit of an extender. And I'm trying to remember when I started that, a couple years ago now at least, where I, I put a bit of a teaser and I tried to find um, a sound clip from my guest or something from the episode and put that, you know, 30 seconds to, you know, I think I've gone to 130 seconds in some cases, but ideally under a minute. And then uh, using headliner.org or headliner, headliner.app, I should say, to do um, a, a teaser to, to share in social media, um, you know, to help promote the guest. And and sometimes I'm even on the ball enough to send that teaser to the guests. Sometimes I even let my guests know, hey, your episode went live this week. Sometimes months later I go, oh yeah, by the way, I forgot to tell you it went live. And that's because I'm a procrastinator and uh, this is a solo project. Yes, that's my partner Liz Anderson's voice at the beginning uh, of the clip. I wanted to have a a much nicer voice for the for the intro and stuff like that. So that's that's Liz you hear, but this is a solo effort. I uh, I do all the editing, all the producing, etc., arranging, organizing, etc., all by myself. But let's go back, shall we? Just go back into the time machine, please, and let us hear that opening 
of the very first episode of the Stark Reflections podcast. Hello and welcome to the first episode of the Stark Reflections on Writing and Publishing podcast. I'm Mark Leslie Lefebvre, your host, and in the forthcoming episodes, you'll hear interviews and conversations centered on creativity, writing, and publishing. I'll be talking to authors, editors, publishers, industry experts, as well as other creative folks whose work can help inform and inspire those for whom writing is a central activity. In this first episode, I'm going to share some of my own personal plans and goals. As I'm recording this, it's early January 2018. I recently left a fantastic position that I had in the industry in order to attempt a change in lifestyle. I've always loved helping others, but I wanted to be able to do that without wearing any specific corporate hat. Part of the change was an intent to spend more time writing and more time helping other writers and publishers with their own writing and publishing goals. So, along with the chats and interviews and perspective on writing and publishing, I'll also be sharing my own personal updates on my writing life and my role as a consultant in the book industry in the hopes that this open exploration into what I'm doing can help inform and even inspire you in your own personal journey. If at any point you have any questions you'd love me to answer or topics to cover, please email me at mark at marklesley.ca or you can reach out to me via Twitter at Mark Leslie. But let's get on with this episode's topic, shall we? The start of a new year is always a time for reflection. It's often a chance to look back at the previous year and the goals accomplished during that previous year. And it usually also involves setting some goals or targets for the year ahead. Now, I've continued to do that each year. But if you're like me, and perhaps you also fall prey to one of those other pesky little side effects that can come when reflecting on your goals. You end up focusing only on the things that you didn't get to strike off your annual writing to-do list. We tend to always do that to ourselves. For example, last year in 2017, one of my writing goals included creating and launching a new short story collection. Another involved writing the first draft of the sequel to my novel, A Canadian Werewolf in New York. And the third involved getting the audiobook for A Canadian Werewolf in New York completed. I didn't get any of those three things done. And I could focus on that. Or I could take a look at the details behind each, and I could applaud myself for coming close in achieving several of those tasks, or even look at the work that I've been able to do on them and see how much I actually got done and where I am in relation to where I was at the beginning of the year. So looking at the things that were actually accomplished related to those goals. So I'm going to go through those in a little bit of detail just to illustrate uh, what I'm trying to get across here. So in regards to the short story collection, I didn't end up putting together the story collection that I had planned. I initially launched my self-publishing career, if if you would uh, have it, in 2004 with a short story collection, and I thought it would be appropriate to try to bring out uh, a newer one, a more revised one, with newer stories that have been published or even written and not published since then, which is kind of how I did the first one. Now, I didn't do the full short story collection I was planning, but I did some experimentation, and I ended up adapting that into a different goal. I did create a smaller story collection, one that I launched into the Kindle Direct Publishing Select program, so that I could test the Kindle Unlimited Waters. Now, while I have never been a fan of being exclusive to any particular retailer, I felt it was important for me, especially because of my previous role heading up the self-publishing team at a Kindle competitor, Kobo, to better understand a writer's perspective with being in the program. Sure, I've had a title in KDP Select since it was launched but I didn't ever do much with it. And the topic of the book I published, while perhaps interesting or hot in 2011, isn't new, isn't up to date. I wanted to give it a shot with something relatively new. So, in experimenting, I created four volumes of shorter booklets that contained three short stories each. 
And uh, that's the opening several minutes of the very first episode of the podcast. I, I just I wanted to I wanted to listen back to it because I haven't really gone back and, and listened to, to many of the things, except when I'm doing research to talk to someone again, etc. But it's interesting to see what changed. I, I talked about the opening changing a little bit, and I did. Uh, I, I added the uh, calling calling you hello reflectives I, I, I think I adapted from Joanna Penn's hello creatives <laughs> you know come on if it works go for it and and I, but I didn't do that for 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 later on I, I just sort of, I sort of had the standard intro and now I've got some sort of pattern that I, I do on a regular basis but it's interesting to even see I, I didn't even normalize the audio and I left I left the raw original audio I didn't clean it up even though I was really really tempted to because I've, I've developed that habit over the years as I do this but I was thinking about the things okay so in 2018 I was struggling because I had written a Canadian werewolf New York and and the year before I was trying to get the sequel done uh fear and longing in Los Angeles I ended up that became book three because other things happened but that all didn't come about till 2020 two years later that I actually turned it into a series but I had plans to do it earlier and the, and the reason I wanted to share a little bit more of the reflections of how I failed and the things I tried is I am willing to experiment. I'm willing to try different things. I want to learn and I want to do it in as transparent a way as possible to share with you. And I hope I've done that for you over the years, sharing the successes, the triumphs, and the absolute failures along the way, just so you can see that, I mean, it, it does happen all the time. But that it can even take a long time. So that was interesting to see. And of course, I do uh, occasional solo episodes as well where I get caught up on, on very specific things. But I wanted to wanted to listen back on that and reflect to what's changed, what hasn't changed about the podcast. And even when I, when I said what I planned on doing with the podcast, I'm pretty pretty proud of myself. And, and, and I, I, I say that with a wry grin on my face right now because I, I do have self-confident issues and I try to overcompensate for the self-confidence issues. And oftentimes, you know, Liz gets home from work and we're having dinner and stuff. Like, I'm pretty proud of myself. I, I, I sat down and I actually got a story finished today or whatever. And, and, and I very often say that I'm proud of myself because I, um, I need to get used to being proud of the work I do. I think we as writers need to get back to being proud of what we do but I'm pretty proud of the fact that I actually stuck to the plan and and it was a good plan for me I found benefit in in talking to the people I've talked to and learning and I'm hoping that you have as well but speaking of talking to people and and nostalgia and all that stuff why don't we dip into one of the first one of the first reflections and this first one comes from Edwin Downward. Now, you've heard Edwin's, if you're a long-time listener, you've heard Edwin's reflections on many episodes. He comments regularly on Twitter. Edwin, I love that you're constantly reflecting, constantly thinking about all the cool things that you're thinking about when you're listening to the podcast. But now we get the benefit of hearing directly from you. How can I start this without thanking Mark for all that he's done for us writers? and how much he's willing to put himself out there to help us all become better at what we're doing. And it's in that respect that I'd like to center in on one way he does this. Of all the podcasts I listen to each week, his is unique in that at the end of each episode, he gives us his reflection, a deeper reflection on one or two things that popped out during the interview, things that I, as a listener, am still processing myself. I'll go so far as to estimate that 75% of the comments I've left for Mark on Twitter came from his reflection and not from the original interview itself. And again, I'd like to thank Mark and highlight this way he has of making us think and think deeper about the subjects that he's covering and giving us insights that uh, I oftentimes miss on other podcasts because they don't have that reflection time 
that makes it possible for me to also reflect the same way that I'm more likely to leave a comment to Mark's podcast because the reflection time set it in my mind, while on others, I sort of have to remember after the fact, oh yeah, I wanted to comment on that thing. So again, kudos to Mark and all he does for the whole lot of us every time he gives us a stark reflection. And that was Edwin Downward from edwindownward.com. There will be links to all of the commenters of the websites, etc., etc. I just want to let you guys know, dear listeners, is I'm, I'm so tempted, especially after that reflection, to reflect on the reflection. But no, otherwise it would just be me and I want to get on with all of the great comments that people have shared. So this one, this one that's coming in right now, is actually one that was uh, a text one. So you're going to hear it in my voice, I'm afraid. But this comes from Stanley B. Trice. And he's over at stanleybtrice.com. And and so the, his initial comment about the reflection from the note is, uh, thanks for the podcast. The 600th episode will be here before you know it. And uh, Stanley's reflection is, hi, Mark. This is Stanley B. Trice, and this is my reflection. I made the mistake of letting people discourage me from writing since I was six years old until my early 40s. All that time, I kept my writing secret until I finally learned to stop listening to people. I got some duct tape, patched up my confidence, and sent my stories to magazines. Some of them were published within a few months. Many years later, at 65 and with new improved duct tape, I built up my confidence a little higher and published my first novel. Since then, I have published three other novels and I'm working on two more for this year. I don't need the duct tape anymore. My reflection for writers is to seek out the positive. If your circle of family, friends, and teachers are not encouraging, listen to podcasts like Mark's or join a supportive writers group. Find your writing family. I'm always chasing courage to keep going. I keep chasing. Thank you for that, Stanley. Oh, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to reflect. I'm just going to move on. Uh, so one of the things I did is I also I invited listeners, but I invited some previous guests, some other people in the industry, other podcast hosts as well to come on. And you may recognize this forthcoming voice, not only from uh, two previous episodes, but this is the only person to have ever rebelliously taken over my podcast. And I'll have a link to that episode, episode 155. Coming up in this episode of the Stark Reflections on Writing and Publishing podcast, I have this amazing opportunity to... Surprise! No more Mark this episode, bitches! This is actually going to be called the Rebel Reflections episode. Shall we continue, perhaps? Welcome to the Stark Reflections on Writing and Publishing podcast. There has never been a better time for writers. More information, options... But without further ado, from the Rebel Author Podcast, here's Sasha Black. Hello everyone, it's Sasha Black here. My biggest reflection from the last few years is to find joy. Many of us indies turn to writing for escapism... And then we end up turning writing into a job, or at least that's what I did. Last year, I went through a huge shift, both both physically, personally, and mentally in terms of my mindset. And I decided to just write joyfully and surprising literally no one. I'm happier in myself, work is easier, and I wake up excited every single day. The best part is that you can see the joy into everything, including marketing. If you don't want to do TikTok, you know what? 
don't do it. If you don't want to do Instagram, don't do it. If you love Facebook, if you love video, then lean into it because you will find readers. The internet is a very, very big place and you can find readers anywhere. But if you aren't joyful, that comes across in how you present yourself, it comes across in your content and it comes across to your readers. So find your joy. My best piece of advice to you, this won't surprise anyone, is to rebel. Rebel against what you think you have to do and just do what makes you happy. Just be you. Don't write the book you think you should be writing. Write the most you book you possibly can. And I promise you, you will be happier and in a better place and you'll find it easier to market that book too. Speaking of voices you may recognize, especially if you've been listening to podcasts for a while. This is Johnny B. Truant, formerly of the self-publishing podcast, the Story Studio podcast, the Smarter Artist Summit, one of the authors of Write, Publish, Repeat, and a whole bunch of other stuff. These days, I'm flagship author for Sterling and Stone Story Studio, which um, I helped co-found. And I've been in this game for, uh, I want to say, about a dozen years now working with um, Sean Platt and David Wright for 10 or 11 of those years. And after writing, I don't know, a couple hundred books or something at this point, one of the things that's really started to stand out is that story really is everything. It really is how we change the world. If we're looking to change the world, it's how we also how we perpetuate the status quo, if that's what we're looking to do. The things that actually change in the world or don't change are not done by legislation or protesting, really, even in most cases, or people trying to convince other people through brute force. They're done through the Trojan horse of story, where people are entertained first and various things are presented as normal. And it's a weird kind of inception where the things that are presented as normal are presented as acceptable. The things that the author and narrator of the book, the author of the book or the story in, in any way, shape, or form, be it TV or movies, which you know usually begin with, with us at the ground floor as, as just authors, those things are what actually shapes the public psyche, the sort of the zeitgeist that comes from the stories that we tell. That is how humans learn. And so when things evolve in our world, they evolve because storytellers, um, enough storytellers are beginning to say the same things. And so when I look at the state of the world, like a lot of us, you know, I have my concerns, but it gives me hope and it, it makes me feel like what I'm doing is worthwhile because we storytellers are ultimately the only people who will begin to shape the world in the way that we want it. Anything that you want changed, anything that you feel strongly about should go into a story much more appropriately than anything overtly persuasive because that's how you get beneath the defenses of people in a benevolent way and uh, begin to actually shape things. And that just gets truer the longer I'm in this business, so I couldn't be happier to be in it. Hey there, it's Sean from Sterling and Stone. It's crazy to me that it's been more than 10 years since we published Yesterday's Gone. Hundreds of books, millions of downloads, and a few film and television deals later, it still feels brand new to me. When we started the self-publishing podcast more than a decade ago, I strongly felt that there had never been a better time in history for storytellers. I feel that even more strongly today. We also made the argument back then that a brilliant marketer with a marginal storytelling skill set would always outperform a magnificent storyteller with no marketing skills when it came to sales. Unfortunately, we've all seen how true that can be, but the pendulum is swinging the other way. As marketing tools become increasingly simplified and AI can write our product descriptions for us, I am overjoyed to see that the needle is moving to quality being the differentiator again. I have never been more excited about the future for storytellers than I am right now. Best of luck to all of us. If you're not familiar, so Johnny and Sean and, and their friend Dave are from, um, was the self-publishing podcast, sterlingandstone.net. 
Um, I'll link to that in the show notes. And and I thought it was just so cute because Sean's just a prolific, such a prolific writer and idea generator, etc. That as he's finishing recording it, he's already starting to work on some writing project, and and that's a key. So they they also they, they wrote a book many many years ago called Write, Publish, Repeat, about the process of just working on content. And these guys have been working so hard on content over the years. In fact, the TV series Reginald the Vampire is based on Johnny's book, Fat Vampire, which was inspired by them goofing around and Dave making fun of himself on uh, on the self-publishing podcast all those years ago. So it was kind of fun to, to hear from John, Johnny and uh, Sean. And, and of course, Dave is probably off writing somewhere or maybe potentially playing video games. Who knows? They probably have a joke about what, what he was up to. But... Let's get on to the next uh, voice, and the next voice is going to be me reading one of uh, one of the contents comments, I should say, that came in from Honoré Quarter, and she was in episode 198, multiple prosperous winners in marketing publishing, with Honoré Quarter, and she sent in this text, which I'm going to read to you. I did not know when I wrote and published my first book that my life and business would be forever changed in ways I simply could not foresee. There was no one saying much in addition to writing a book will allow you to get more clients and earn more money. It has been, in fact, the intangibles, the friendships, connections, and other magical things that have been the best of all. I'm glad I took the advice of an author I greatly admired, Mark Victor Hansen. He simply said, you must write a book. It was probably, for him, an offhanded comment. For me, it was a shot straight into my soul that altered the trajectory of my entire life. This decision to publish coincided almost identically with the dawn of self-publishing. I was able to, within a short time, have ebooks read around the world even as I shared print copies of my books hand to hand. It was an incredible time, and as the years have marched on, the miraculous and serendipitous moments have grown too many to count or even remember. I'm grateful I took Mr. Hansen's advice. I'm even more grateful I got the bug to continue to write and publish. I do believe the best is yet to come. And that was Honoré Quarter at honorécorder.com. And this next one comes from Connor Whiteley. And you can find him over at connorwhiteleyfiction.com. Hi, Mark. Massive congratulations on hitting episode 300 of your podcast. And a massive thank you for providing so much great content and valuable information for all of us over the years. My personal reflection is learning. Learning is so important for authors, whether this is learning about the business so that we can actually like make money as authors and take advantage of our intellectual property, or whether this is about craft, because we can all write um, good books, but we always need to be learning and in approving our craft, whether this is from our writing courses. Dean Wesley Smith and, and Christine Catherine Rush and all of the great areas of our craft. Because as like Dean says, if a writer stops learning, then they're done in a few years. And that's something that I personally really take to heart. So a massive thank you Mark for actually being a part of that learning and I wish you the best of luck in the future and towards episode 400. And back to comment from fellow podcasters. Stark Reflections episode 300. Congrats Mark. We got a hot potato of wisdom for you listeners. Claire... Uh, what what should our our wonderful listeners of Stark Reflections, uh, what what should they take away from today's episode? If I was going to give you one hot potato, I would say that the most important thing you can do is figure out what your career looks like for you. But if I was going to give you two hot potatoes of wisdom, 
I would say that the second one is figure out what your career does not look like for you. Brian, do you have a hot potato of wisdom for everyone? I think my hot potato is listen to everything Claire says because <laughs> uh, Claire Taylor knows what she's talking about. Brian Cohen here. Congrats again, Mark. Have fun on episode 300. Bye, Mark. Bye, everyone. And that was Brian Cohen and H. Claire Taylor from Somewhere Books Show Podcast, two co-hosts for that weekly podcast that has plenty of hot potatoes of wisdom and lightning rounds and great, great sound effects from Brian. So uh, Brian was in also in episode 254, Best Pages, Ads, and Newsletters with Brian Cohen. And H. Claire Taylor was interviewed on episode number 240, Character Story and Industry Alignment with Claire Taylor. Also, Claire was featured in the previous episode or the episode after that, episode 241, because we talked about an article she posted. And, and this is the indie publishing has a creep problem. But speaking of pairs... Speaking of two people, you're going to hear from two other people right now. Hi, this is Kevin J. Anderson. Mark, congratulations. 600 episodes of a podcast. I'm really impressed. I've done a podcast before. I know how much work it is. And you really put your heart and soul into it. And, and I'm just so proud of you. And Rebecca, I didn't even know that your brother Mark had a podcast. What's it about? Not my brother Mark. Mark from Superstars. The one you have beers with, you know? Oh, oh, that Mark, Mark, Mark Stallings. I'm sorry, Mark. I just, I missed it. I didn't, uh, we, we didn't even talk about your podcast. And that's why you had beer at the brewery. And we should chat about it. So maybe I want to be on it. And, and, no, uh, no, not Mark Stallings. Mark Lefebvre from Superstars. Mark Le, Mark Leslie Lefebvre, the tall yes, guy, the bald that's guy. Him. Oh, 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 um, uh, Mark, c congratulations on the podcast. I've kind of lost steam now. So 600 episodes. Great. Um, Happy good, 600. Good luck to you. Thank you. Happy 600. And yeah, that was my dear friend, Kevin J. Anderson and his wife, Rebecca Mesta, both international bestselling authors. And, uh, and of course, uh, Kevin's a really good beer buddy and fellow Rush aficionado. <laughs> it was kind of cute. Uh, so the, uh, 600 300 uh, obviously um the the number was was an audio typo but it was just so hilarious and, and what i loved about this is this is a very similar shtick that kevin and rebecca played on me for my 50th birthday so liz had asked a bunch of people to send in video clips wishing me happy birthday and they did a very very similar clip where kevin pretended to be confused about which mark and so i thought that i thought that was kind of fun uh anyways so you can find uh you can find i i mentioned superstars a lot uh, multiple episodes probably dozens of episodes over the years but if you want to hear an interview that i did with kevin I interviewed Kevin for episode number 130, and this was in April of 2020, so we were about you know, a month into the pandemic, and I called it Grace Under Pressure with Kevin J. Anderson, and, and that was writing through change, tragedy, and trauma, because Kevin and Rebecca have gone through some very, very dramatic trauma in their family with the loss of a son, and, you know, relatively young son with very young children. And, and then, of course, several losses and even, you know, Neil Peart, uh, Kevin was good friends with Neil Peart, the, the drummer, for, lyricist for Rush, and he became friends with Neil after he sent Neil a copy of his very first novel, science fiction novel, which was based on, uh, inspired by, or not based on, but he was listening to their album, Grace Under Pressure, and so put a, a lot of Easter eggs uh, in it uh, while listening to it and said, thanks guys for the inspiration. Anyways, a uh, great episode about why it's important, why in times of sadness and trouble, why we need story, why we need story. And that's been a constant theme that we've heard from, from several folks. But speaking of the importance of story and of longevity and of just everything good about creativity, let's hear from... A mentor of mine, a friend of mine, who is also a fellow podcaster, also a fellow writer, and even somebody I've co-authored with. Hello, everyone. I'm Joanna Penn from thecreativepen.com. 
And for Mark's 300th episode, I wanted to reflect on longevity as an author and how it can impact your personal life as well as your writing business in a positive way. So if you're listening and you're just starting out, or you don't know any other authors yet, or if you're struggling to find community and support as an author, then this might help. Because I've learned that if you're open to opportunity, share what you know and help other people along the way, you will attract like-minded people and they can become good friends over time. So Mark first came on my Creative Pen podcast back in 2012, when he worked at Kobo. And I had jumped onto the new retailer as soon as it emerged and wanted to know how to expand my sales beyond Amazon. Still something many of us are interested in. Mark and I met in person when he spoke at London Book Fair and then I visited the Kobo offices in Toronto in 2014. And we spoke together on the Kobo stand at Frankfurt Book Fair in Germany. I have a picture of us together when Mark still had hair. Over more than a decade, we have worked together as colleagues in the industry at Kobo and then Draft a Digital. Also as podcasters sharing our knowledge and we have both interviewed each other multiple times on each other's show. And also creatively we've worked together as Mark commissioned my first short stories which later became A Thousand Fiendish Angels and he has always encouraged me in writing my dark side even as we are both happy, positive people because he has the same dichotomy, and if you read his fiction, you will see that side of him. We have spoken at multiple conferences together in the US and Europe, and there's also been some craft beer, some gin and tonic, and karaoke along the way, as well as back and forth emails when things have been hard for one or other of us, or we always ask each other for help or question. In 2021, we were concerned about the level of burnout in the author community, So we co-wrote The Relaxed Author, which has at its heart the idea of a sustainable author career over the long term. And that book ties us together with copyright, which goes on decades after the death of the author. Longer than marriage, which when you think about it is a hell of a commitment. We learned a lot about each other when working together. And yes, we're still friends. All this to say that over the years, Both of us have just kept writing our books, both fiction and non-fiction, and we have both tried to keep reaching readers in lots of different ways, as well as playing our part in the community, both for business reasons, as this is both of our jobs, but also for the love of it, because none of this works if you don't love it. Success in podcasting is the same. Perhaps it's true of any career, that the longer you do it, the more opportunities arrive, and the more successful you will be, however you define success, and you will find friendships along the way. So congratulations, Mark, on 300 episodes, and here's to another decade of the author life. And so Joanna's, what, 700, 800 episodes of her podcast? Again, huge, huge fan of Joe's podcast, and always, always inspired by her. I'm going to hear from another podcaster who has... I'm sorry, but it's way too many podcasts over the years. He probably has stopped more podcasts than I will ever start to publish. And also a guest on the show. So uh, Jay Thorne was a guest on episode 21. goes back to episode 21, Real World, Conne- Real World Connections in a Digital World with Jay Thorne and Zach Bohannon. And here is Jay. Mark, Jay Thorne here. Congratulations, 300 episodes. That is a landmark number of episodes. And uh, just want to say on behalf of everyone in the independent author community, uh, going back before even the first episode, uh, you have supported us and been a champion of what we've done for decades. And uh, you're one of the nicest guys I've ever met, let alone one of the nicest guys in the industry. So uh, congratulations on it. I, uh, I hope you, you put out 300 more. I hope you sell a million books. And, uh, and look forward to seeing you again in person sometime soon. All my best, buddy. Congrats. And so this next clip comes from Kay Booth, who you may recognize was on episode 277. This was a live broadcast that Kay did. So Kay put together a book called Ask the Authors, 2022. And 
got advice from a ton of authors, collected it all together for other authors to share that. And we did that live, and that was episode 277 live chat with Ask the Authors 2022. And you can find Kay online over at writingtobered.com. And this is her text reflection. Now, this is for a specific episode. Here is Kay's reflection. Hi, Mark. I wanted to thank you so much for episode 294 with Jeff Adams and Michele Lucini and their content for everyone book. I was so excited to find out about this. I've been working with one of my authors who is deaf to get the word out through my blog, Writing to be Read, about how to get your books into the National Library Service for the Blind and Print Disabled Talking Book Service. Many authors don't realize what a huge audience this is, and very few are tapping into it. It's a great way to reach a whole different audience of potential readers or listeners. Content for everyone fits right in with this, perhaps goes beyond it. I just bought the book and will be incorporating its information into a post for my readers. Being inclusive isn't just good for readers, it's good for authors too. And thank you too, Mark, for all of the great content that you produce. I feel like I'm continuing my writing education and the information you provide is both interesting and helpful. And it's also a lot cheaper than getting another master's degree. It's good to have a place to turn to where you can keep up with the industry. Thanks for all that you do. This next comment, you may recognize his dulcet tones as the voice of draft to digital but also podcaster. He's sort of retired, his podcaster, but he's now jumped onto one of the Jay Thorne podcasts. You may hear him in Writer's Inc. now. But from draft to digital from self-publishing insiders, from Wordslinger podcast, here's Kevin Tumlinson. Hi, this is Kevin Tomlinson, host of shows like the Word Slinger podcast, Self-Publishing Insiders with draft to digital and the Writers, Inc. podcast. And first, I want to congratulate Mark Lefebvre on 300 episodes of Stark Reflections. Writers are often given advice on everything from writing craft to marketing, and that comes from a really amazing quality that's baked into the author community. We all know what it's like to face the empty page and then put ourselves out there, hoping to see our publishing dreams come true. Sometimes all that advice can feel overwhelming. There are just so many brilliant people in this business, so many options, so many ways you can go. If you were to ask me for advice, this is what I would tell you. Do the things that move you toward your dream and that make you feel good in pursuing it and leave everything else on the table. If you love making TikTok videos, embrace that and do it with all your heart and energy. If you despise posting on Twitter, then delete that app from your phone. Pour yourself into what you love to do. Writing is a business, but it's also a passion. Learn to trust that passion and do what energizes you. If you feel obligated to do things that drain you, eventually you'll feel drained about all of it. Money is good, but feeling energized and excited and passionate is much better. That's the advice I'd give if you asked me for it. Congratulations again to Mark and to Stark Reflections. And thank you, my friend, for helping writers like me move along the path to this dream. All right, we're getting close to the end. We get the next clip you're going to hear comes from Maddie Dalrymple. And Maddie is not only the host of the indie author, podcast but she's also been a guest numerous times on this podcast now let me let me just go through uh, i was just looking at all the different episodes that maddie's been on so we have episode 216 podcasting for authors with maddie dalrymple we go way back to episode 116 taking the short tack with maddie dalrymple we talk about us co-authoring that book about short fiction but then also maddie's been in a whole bunch of reflective round tables as a longtime patron of the show and she's in the June Reflective Hangout, where we just kind of hang out and all chatting. She's in uh, March 2022, uh, February 2022, and January 2022, and December 2022. I mean, she's sort of like the, uh, what we call it, the, um, uh, what was the center square? Of, of the Hollywood squares, you know, she would be like the center square person who's always there at those at those round tables as well. And and so this is what Maddie wanted to share with my listeners. 
Mark, congratulations on the 300th episode of the Stark Reflections podcast, and thank you for everything you do to support your fellow authors. In fact, the reflection I'd like to share is inspired by that generosity. As listeners of the Indie Author Podcast know, I love using nautical metaphors to explore the writing craft and the publishing voyage, and the metaphor that springs to mind in this case is, a rising tide raises all boats. No one displays that better than you. You are a model of the value of a mindset of plenty. I can't think of a better example than your willingness to do a podcast episode on short fiction based on a request from a listener, me, you didn't know from Adam, and then to entertain the idea of co-authoring a book with me on that topic. I use you as an inspiration if I ever need to remind myself that a rising tide does in fact raise all boats, and I have never looked back on a circumstance where I've helped a fellow writer and felt that my own opportunities had been lessened as a result. Quite the contrary, they're almost always expanded. And I hope that we've paid you back for that generosity by supporting you on your creative voyage, from patronizing your podcast, whether that's through financial support or sharing your episodes on social media and recommending them to our friends, to pointing people to your books, to attending events where you're a speaker and spreading the word to others about those events. I'm using this as a reminder to myself to find opportunities to do that for other authors as well. I know you'll be embarrassed by these words of praise, but I'm willing to take that chance to share with you and your listeners how much I appreciate all you've done for your writing and publishing communities. So I'm raising a virtual craft beer to you in celebration of you and your writing and publishing voyage and the fleet of authors you've helped over the years. Here's to the next 100 episodes of Reflections. Okay, I have to remind myself, don't stop working on the podcast, editing, doing all the stuff. Don't go get a beer so you can raise one to Maddie. I will raise a beer with you later when I finish this work, Maddie, and get the podcast for you. But thank you for that. Okay, and now we're going to hear from Ron Collins. Now, Ron's a science fiction writer that I know through Dean Wesley Smith, Christine Catherine Rush. I'm pretty sure I met Ron for the very first time at one of the workshops in Lincoln City. And you can find Ron and everything about him online over at typosphere.com, where he does have a very active blog. Probably some things I should reflect on, but never mind me reflecting. Let's hear Ron's reflection. Hello, Mark. This is Ron Collins. Uh, Congratulations on your big number 300. That is a huge accomplishment and really a testament to... Oh, your generosity and your positive spirit in everything about you. Uh, 300 doesn't come along uh, too easily, and I want to make sure everyone gets a chance to pat you on your back for a really great, great accomplishment. To reflect on the stark reflections, I think that your podcast is really important these days because you know, the world is changing so quickly anymore, uh, definitely relative to when I came up and I think when you came up too, um, or at least it seems to be changing so rapidly. Maybe it's not true. Maybe it's only changing at a semi pace, but it feels so huge because there's so many options and everything is so overwhelming. And the thing that makes Dark Reflections so important to me is that every week, You know, I get to put you and your guests into my aging ears every week, and um, it helps me feel less overwhelmed and less alone and more capable of moving forward through the world. So thank you so much. Congratulations again. And um, here's hoping for 300 more. This next reflection is from a guest I haven't yet had on my show. I've interviewed her for other podcasts, but never on Stark Reflections. She's going to be coming up in a future episode, but she's also a podcaster herself, or has been. Last podcast she was the co-host of was the Six Figure Author Podcast. She has done tons and tons of different podcasts over the years, and I've been listening to her since she first self-published back in Back in 2010, 2011 was when she uh, first started listening to her on podcast. So this is a reflection from Lindsay Broker. I feel fortunate to have been a full-time author now for more than 10 years, especially since I've seen a lot of people come and go. And I often get people asking, you know, what is the secret to success, especially lasting success, you know, not just having one, a one hit wonder. And it's really boring. And I know everybody always wants the they're like there's something with the Amazon algorithms that if you just do that or if you just get enough reviews, that'll be perfect. But um, it's really boring. It's being consistent. Uh, that's sort of I've put out books regularly, consistently since I published my first one in December of 2010. I've now got over 100 novels out and some shorter things. And I did not start out writing fast, but it got faster along the way. 
And then part of it too is just if you can develop a unique voice as an author, and it, as tempting as, as it is to write the things that are selling well, you want to make sure you're also developing a voice that your fans will come to you and they'll start to recognize your voice. Even if you have like a pen name, they might identify you. That happened to me. Uh, and that's what makes you special to them and not interchangeable with all the other authors. So it's, it's easier said than done. But if you can really get your personality in your work, that's the best way to build a fan base over time. And that is the key to success, knowing that whenever you put out a new book, you've got people who are going to read it and buy it <laughs> and give you money. Always nice. Okay, like I mentioned, uh, we're getting close to the very end. Last comment coming up. And this one comes in from Julie Strauss. Now, you've heard me talk a lot about Julie because I adore her. She's a dear friend. And we have co-authored a few books together, have some other projects in the works we're really excited about. And she's been on a few episodes. She was on episode uh, 231, Reflective Roundtable, January 2022. But back in episode 35, I had her on for Lessons Learned from the Novel Intensive Workshop. And this, this, this is what I love about Julie is it wasn't about her. It was about how much she learned and she wanted to bring on people from the Novel Intensive Workshop to, 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 to share her love and enthusiasm for them. Because she's constantly coming to the writer mastermind that I'm in, in with her with, oh, you should see so-and-so is doing this awesome stuff. And she's constantly propping other people up, which is what she does on her Best Book Ever podcast. And, and it's related to what she's going to talk about in this reflection is her curiosity about what people think the best novel ever is. She's fascinated to talk to them and to find out why they love this book so much. I can't get enough of her awesome podcast. If you are a book lover in any way, shape, or form, go check out the best book ever.com. But now let's check out this reflection from Julie Strauss. Hello, fans of the Stark Reflections podcast. This is Julie Strauss of the Best Book Ever podcast. And today, in celebration of Mark's 300th episode, I'm reflecting on curiosity. Now, I first met Mark Lefebvre at my very first writer's conference when I hadn't even published a full novel yet, and he was the director of self-publishing at Kobo. Please understand that when I say I met Mark Lefebvre, what I really mean is that the writer I was sort of hanging out with at the time told me I should meet him, and I said, hell no. He was an industry big shot, always surrounded by crowds of writers who wanted his advice, and I barely knew how to work an e-reader. But eventually, on the last day of that conference, my own curiosity about this man that everyone was so excited about trumped my fears, and I worked up the nerve to introduce myself. A few days later, I sent him an email thanking him for answering my pretty basic questions. And I said, I'm not a big deal author, and I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Now, this is the important part, because in my mind, it sums up Mark's entire personality. He emailed back, you're not a big deal author yet. That word, all caps, yet. He hadn't read my book. He didn't know anything about me or my ambitions or my skill. All he knew at that point was that I was a writer who was hungry for information and was willing to ask. Since then, Mark has not only become my valued mentor in the publishing world, but also my beloved co-author and one of my closest friends. And here's what I can tell you about him. All of the traits that you love about Mark Lefebvre as host of this podcast are exactly who he is in real life. He's funny and kind and honest and trustworthy. And above all, he has insatiable curiosity. He's never intimidated by trends or new technology or shifts in the market. He approaches every change with openness and a willingness to pivot. He's genuinely curious about the perspectives of other people, the approaches of other writers, even when they differ from his own. He genuinely wants you, yes, you, dear listener, to succeed. He wants to share all the information that he has to help you succeed, whether you're still working on your first book or your 50th book just made the Times bestseller list. He sings Rush songs pretty much 24-7. He never met a dad joke he didn't like. He adores his family, and he deeply respects his colleagues. Most of all, he loves everything about the publishing world. He loves writers. 
He loves publishers. He loves book cover designers. He loves editors. He loves booksellers. And my God, does he love books. You all know that sometimes the indie publishing world can be discouraging. Some days it feels like a treadmill. Other days it feels like a dumpster fire. On the days that I feel burned out or heartbroken or like I've used up all of my creative energy and I don't have any left, I like to listen to Mark's podcast. His enthusiasm never fails to cheer me up, to give me perspective, to remind me that I got into this business for the same reasons that Mark did, for the sheer love of writing words and the delightful curiosity about how others do it. This is incredible, wonderful, challenging, frustrating, magical work that we do. And I'm willing to bet that most people in your life don't really understand it. But Mark understands. So, congratulations on 300 episodes, Mark. Thank you for sharing what you know with all of us. We, your listeners, are the lucky ones. Oh, thank you so much, Julie. Um, I'm almost in tears uh, with the lovely sentiment uh, that you and so many other people shared. Thanks, everyone, for your congratulations. Thank you, everyone, for your awesome reflections. I'm not going to reflect on those reflections. I want to let your awesome reflections stand on their own. But the last one last thing I want to do as I celebrate episode 300 is I wanted to list the people who have supported this podcast over the years on Patreon. Now, this is whether you support it for one episode, whether you supported it from the very beginning. This is a list of what I believe is in alphabetical order, everyone who has supported this podcast from from the beginning of time. Again, in alphabetical order, and a huge thank you to those who support the podcast over at patreon.com slash Stark Reflections. And my apologies if I butcher your name. Just let me know. Just message me, email mark at marklessly.ca. That'd be fun. I'd love to be able to correct that. And so, James S. Aaron, Rachel Amphlett, Ellie Ash, Krista D. Ball, Leanne Beckett, Kay Booth, Chad Boyer, Lindsay Baroker, Joanne Carson, Ember Casey, Malcolm Kuhn, Katie Cross, Maddie Dalrymple, Jamie Davis, Sherilyn Dector, Roland Denzel, Macy Dixon, Edwin Downward, D.H. Dunn, Jeff Elkins, Jamie Ferguson, Jan Field, Marcel Gagne, Chuck Heinzelman, David Heyman, Linda Hill, Michael Edwin Howell, Persteiner K. Hofton, Katie, Pernanthi K., Alyssa Curon, Dharma Keller, Jenny Samard Labranche, Michael Lister, Tessa Smith McGovern, Kathy Mack, Elizabeth Meredith, S. W. Miller, Jared Nelson, Kevin Partner, Joanna Penn, David Perlmutter, Mary Jo Rabe, Johanna Rothman, Maria Stahl, Carolyn Stein, Linda Sterling, Julie Strauss, Amy Teagan, Stanley B. Trice, Faye White, Selena Winters. Thanks to all of you for your patronage of supporting the Stark Reflections podcast. This this episode was sponsored by y'all. Thanks so much for your passion, your love, your respect, your support, and thank you, dear listener, for being here for episode 300. I will be back next week with episode 301, and I do hope to continue to be back every single week where we both learn, listen, and reflect together. Thank you for listening to the Stark Reflections podcast. You can find show notes for each episode at starkreflections.ca. The music for this podcast, Laser Groove, was composed and produced by Kevin McLeod. Check out more of Kevin's great music at incomtech.com.